Welcome to Leadership Talks, Protecting and Storing Documents. I'm Joanne Baker, a Rural Leadership Specialist with Manitoba Agriculture. What is Leadership Talks? Manitoba Agriculture Industry Leadership staff provide free webinars on building the organizational capacity within the agriculture sector, which results in high performing organizations. This content is designed for informational purposes only. This information is not intended to be a substitute for professional advice. Organizations should consult their professional advisors related to specific situations. So let's get started. Do you ever wonder what to do with all the documents your organization generates? You are not alone. It can seem overwhelming and often filing is put off because very few people genuinely like filing. Well, I'm going to try and help you with that by sharing with you what documents an organization is required to keep, for how long, and how to store and destroy records. So what is considered a record? The Income Tax Act defines a record as including an account, an agreement, a book, a charter table, a diagram, a form, an image, an invoice, a letter, a map, a memorandum, a plan, a return, a statement, a telegram, a voucher, and any other thing containing information, whether in writing or in any other form. Email relating to the business of an organization in Canada is a record. And like paper records, email has a proper home in a records retention schedule. As a general rule, it is better to keep more records than fewer. So why keep records? Board members of organizations must perform their legal duties with care. An effective way to minimize risk to themselves and the organization is to ensure permanent records exist of the board's activities. Good record keeping ensures timely and accurate financial statements that enable effective decision making. It ensures accountability to its members and the public. Whether your organization is incorporated, a nonprofit, or a charity, it must establish an appropriate record keeping system and get into the habit of maintaining timely, accurate books and records. Record keeping helps an organization operate efficiently and effectively. It is essential to meet government and legal obligations. From a legal perspective, keeping governing documents and minutes of board meetings in good order is important. Minutes record all important decisions and the rationale behind them. Good minutes demonstrate that directors have upheld their fiduciary duty. It is important to note that once the official minutes are approved for a meeting, all notes made by the board should be destroyed. This is because they are not the official approved minutes. Should there be a litigation, any unofficial notes that board members have written could be used and they may not be an accurate picture of the official meeting minutes. So what are some record keeping basics? Generally, you must keep all required records and supporting documents for a period of six years for the end of the last tax year they relate to. They must be capable of verifying all charitable donations and reflect all of the activities of the organization. Records must be in one of Canada's official languages, English or French. They must be stored at a Canadian address that is on file with CRA. The records cannot be kept at someone's home unless that is the address that is on file with CRA. The responsibility for maintaining books and records remains with the organization, even if it is contracted out to a third party. 
This brings us to what documents should be kept. First of all, governance records, anything that applies to governing the organization. Some examples include constitutions, bylaws and regulations, policies and procedures, board minutes, general meeting minutes, annual general meeting minutes, corporation, trademark, licenses and permits, registered charity information, and official seals if the organization has them. Other documents include financial records, anything of a financial nature. So some examples are ledgers, bank statements, canceled checks, financial statements, credit card statements, bank re reconciliation, investments, fundraising materials, petty cash, donation receipts, payroll, tax returns, audit documents, and grant information. And finally, organization records should be kept. Such things as property, insurance, contracts, personnel information, organization activities, so things like programs, newsletters, promotion materials such as brochures, flyers, or advertisements, conference agendas, program reports, historical documents. Keeping one copy of organization activities gives the organization a good archive of past activities. Historical documents can take up a lot of space. Some organizations put them in local museums or the provincial museum or the provincial archives. However, provincial archives is not as easy to access. Scanning these documents as backup could be a good option. Keep any bills of sale for business equipment. It's a good idea to have a record retention and destruction policy. Organizations should have policies in place that clearly state the length of time that the records of an organization must be kept. This will apply to both paper and electronic records. Taking into account the organization's needs and its legal compliance obligations lists the type of records that are to be retained the length of time to retain records, and where or how documents should be stored. The policy should include a record retention schedule that outlines how long each type of record is to be kept. The record retention schedule is approved as the initial maintenance, retention, and disposal schedule for physical and electronic records. List who is responsible for supervising compliance with the policy. So who will be in charge of record retention and destruction? Who will be in charge of organizing documents to be kept and saving the backup copies? Whose role should periodically update and audit the policy according to federal and provincial laws? It should include what to do should litigation occur. Don't dispose of records provide what is asked for, and seek legal and financial advice. And finally, the policy should outline how to dispose of records. A record retention and destruction policy often includes a record retention schedule. Canada Revenue Agency regulations require records and supporting documents to be kept for a period of six years from the end of the last tax year they relate to. The tax year is the fiscal period for corporations and the calendar year for non-incorporated organizations. When a non-incorporated business or other organization ends, the records must be kept for six years from the end of the tax year in which it ceased to exist. When a corporation or charity is dissolved, records must be kept for two years after the date of dissolution. Canada Revenue Agency regulations 
requires some records to be kept as long as the organization is in existence and for a minimum of two years after the date the organization is dissolved. Keep email the time frame of the category it pertains to. In this slide, you can see a sample of a record retention schedule. It outlines the type of document, governance record, financial record, or organizational record, and how long it is to be kept. Here are some steps to record retention. Assign someone to take ownership of record keeping for the organization. Often, this is the treasurer and one other executive member. As the board members change, it is important that how records are kept and where they are stored is passed on to the new board. Review all records and follow the record retention schedule. Decide the best time to move records into storage. Many organizations do this after the external audit is completed for records that relate to the fiscal year just ended. Make sure the storage area is dry and clean. Keeping records is one thing. Keeping them organized is quite another. Store records of similar type together. Governance documents, constitution, policies and procedures, bylaws, the seal, etc. Financial documents together. Annual reports together with the minutes from the annual general meeting. Keeping records that can be destroyed in the same year together. This will facilitate the destruction process later. Label boxes and other storage media identifying what has been stored, the fiscal year the documents relate to, and the year the documents may be destroyed. If storing boxes, it's a good idea to label the front and sides of the box. Create an index of the documents that have been stored, including a description of what has been stored, the location, the fiscal year the documents relate to, and the year the documents may be destroyed. This index can save a lot of time when someone is looking for old documents, and it should be kept permanently. A safety deposit box is a great place to store important deeds and documents, thumb drives, or portable hard drives. It is very important that access to the box is available to several board members. Keep the keys to the box in a safe place. And finally, keep fragile documents in acid-free sleeves. Records can come in paper or electronic form as long as they include all supporting documentation to outline income and expenses. CRA accepts records that are kept in paper format, paper format and later converted to and stored in electronic format, and accessible and readable electronic format. It is recommended to back up records and keep them at a separate location within Canada. This is in case of fire, flood, theft, or other causes. Keep copies of important documents, such as constitution, bylaws, incorporation, etc., with a lawyer or in a safety deposit box. Paper records can be scanned and kept in an electronically readable format. Images must show all details on the front and the back of the originals. Many organizations scan the originals and put the paper versions into storage to save space. Do not destroy any original documents without receiving legal or financial advice first. Electronic records must be in a format that can be traced to supporting a source document and which can be provided in a format that is readable and usable by the CRA. Even if an organization maintains records electronically, it must retain all source documents, 
such as sales invoices, purchase invoices, and other relevant documents. It's also important to ensure a proper record backup in case originals are damaged or destroyed. Should an organization lose its electronic records and have no hard copy of the information, it must report this situation to the CRA and recreate the files within a reasonable amount of time. The CRA Books and Records Retention Destruction Document outlines further details. It can be found at the Canada.ca website. Electronic records are subject to the same rules and retention as hard copy paper records. They must be kept in an electronically readable format even if paper printouts have been made. Electronic source documents must be kept in electronically readable format. Think about a format that can still be read in seven years. Will the operating systems change, etc. Scanned images of paper documents that are maintained in electronic format are acceptable if proper imaging practices are followed and documented. The CRA electronic record keeping document outlines how the documentation must take place. Computerized accounting systems must include sufficient detail to facilitate tracing records back to source documents to create an audit trail. Name documents in a consistent manner so they can easily be found. Protect with passwords firewalls, and other security settings, both locally and in the cloud. Update regularly and back up electronic files. For example, this could be a USB drive by burning information onto a DVD or a portable hard drive. Backup copies of all business information. A backup copy allows you to access your information if you accidentally lose, delete, or erase originals. Computers crashed, are stolen, or accidentally damaged. If you contract an outside party to keep your electronic records, the records must still be available to CRA officials when they ask for them. The CRA electronic record keeping document outlines all requirements, including documenting the scanning of paper records, and the integrity and security of electronic records, how to put controls in place to ensure that records are accurate and have not been changed. It can be found at the Canada.ca website. Before you send documents to storage, and before documents are destroyed, it is always a good idea to have an authorization from the board to do so. This will provide a thoughtful second look at whether the documents are being retained or destroyed appropriately. There can be serious legal consequences for destroying records with or without a record retention schedule. Consult legal or financial advice before destroying records so that you are doing what is best for your organization. When authorized board members discard records, do so by either shredding physical documents or deleting data from a database or computer. Printed copies of electronic files should be shredded as well. Try to ensure that all copies of the document, paper or electronic, are discarded. Organizations with a long history have been known to store documents in the provincial archives. One concern is what to do with old computers and photocopiers that keep copies of documents or scanned documents. There are companies in Winnipeg that will wipe the hard drive or destroy it. Before recycling an old computer, make sure the hard drive is destroyed.
privacy legislation also impacts how information is stored as there is the need to ensure appropriate safeguards are in place to protect the privacy of individuals' personal information. It is recommended that such organizations provide their members, donors, or supporters with an opportunity to decline to receive further communications. The Federal Personal Information Protection and Electronic Documents Act covers the collection, use, or disclosure of personal information in the course of any commercial activity within a province, including provincially regulated organizations. The definition of commercial activity is any particular transaction, act, or conduct, or any regular course of conduct that is of commercial character, including the selling, bartering, or leasing of donor membership or other fundraising lists. Most nonprofits are not subject to the Act because they do not engage in commercial activities. This is typically the case for most charities, minor hockey associations, clubs, community groups, and advocacy organizations. Collecting membership fees, organizing club activities, compiling a list of members' names and addresses, and mailing out newsletters are not considered commercial activities. Similarly, fundraising is not a commercial activity. For more information, go to www.priv.gc.ca or charitycentral.ca. For personnel records, collect only the information that you need. The information you keep on each employee should include education and personal data, work history, salary, benefits, job classifications, and skills. You can find further information at the canadabusiness.ca website. Employers have responsibilities when it comes to personnel records. Every employer shall make and keep a record in respect of each employee, showing the date of commencement of employment and the date of termination of employment, and shall keep such record for a period of at least 36 months after the date of termination of employment. There are rules for personnel record keeping. The complete details are at the Canada Justice Laws website. As a board, it is your fiduciary duty to retain records properly. Some are covered by Acts legislation. The Corporations Act, for example, which is a good standard for everyone to follow. Write a record retention and destruction policy. Back up paper and electronic records. Follow the policy for record storage. Over time, laws change. Review record retention policies on a regular basis and always consult a lawyer or accountant before destroying records. For further information on organizational record keeping, go to the Canada.ca website. Make time to visit our Manitoba Agriculture Industry Leadership webpage at www.gov.mb.ca slash agriculture. There you will find a number of resources including fact sheets and worksheets, templates and guidebooks that will help you strengthen your organization. You will also find contact information for rural leadership specialists who are available to work with your agriculture organization. The website contains a wealth of information related to starting an organization, developing a strategic plan, being a board member, board operations, dissolving an organization, the resources section also contains a number of tools and links that you will find helpful.
you can stay connected by sending questions to leadership at gov.mb.ca. Follow us on Twitter at mbgovag and watch recorded webinars on YouTube, www.youtube.com slash Manitoba Agriculture. Please join the conversation with Manitoba Agriculture. Subscribe to our newsletter. Follow us on Twitter, twitter.com slash mbgovag. Visit our website, manitoba.ca slash agriculture. Call our general inquiries line, 1-844-769-6224. View our videos on YouTube youtube.com slash Manitoba Agriculture.